Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast. Uh, unfortunately, this was all set up in person, and due to the old sick bug, uh, I had to bow out on you guys and save you some save you some sick time for yourself because I, I left a trail of madness behind me. But uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to um, the podcast today, and we're we're doing one uh, via Zoom. Um, I wish we could switch places. Most of these guys are down in Florida and I'm in Illinois. So somehow I got the bad end of the, this deal today, but that's okay. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do a round Robin. Um, I would say let's start with Peter, but there's, there's, uh, more than one. So let's go with, uh, uh, Peter Boyle. Do you want to maybe sort of introduce yourself a little bit, bit about who you are and what you do? And we'll just kind of get everybody on there. Sure. So my name is Peter Boyle. Um, we own and operate six different shed lots. Uh, one in Georgia, the rest here in Florida. Um, so that's kind of what we do as our day job. We also have Making Sales Simple, um, an online training course that we have started for ourselves. And then we market to other shed lots as well. But um, that's a little bit of kind of an insight of what we do um, day to day is the six shed lots, managing them, you know, helping deliveries, sales, the whole thing. And I said to Peter Miller's actually not joining us today. Andrew is joining us. Uh, we'll just call Peter a slacker in all the, all of our spare time. <laughs> but, uh, in reality, we know he's not. He's so gracious and thank for thankful for him. Letting me actually park on his shed lot recently. Whenever we were coming down, that dude's got an awesome okay. story. And, and, uh, some of you guys have heard Peter Boyle and Peter Miller on here before. So it's exciting. Uh, Andrew, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, and my name is Andrew Boyle. I, of course, am Peter Boyle's brother. I've been in the retail industry ever since I was 16 years old. I started full-time in uh, furniture retail, and then for a while there, I, I moved into the shed world, uh, but I still own and operate uh, several retail locations, uh, and I'm one of the co-founders of Making Sales Simple um, with this group here, and I am excited to be on your podcast today. Excellent. So happy to have you on here today. And it's, it's nice to meet you, Barbara, you, you want to say hello to the shed world out here and introduce yourself. Sure. Hi everyone. I'm Barbara and I'm part of uh, making sales simple where I pretty much am the technical person for anything that making sales simple has to offer. So it's been quite a fun journey watching all those bloopers. Other than that, you know, just hoping to impact the sales industry and, and the shed industry with what we've put together. Excellent. So happy to have you guys on today. Obviously there's such a need for what you're doing and it's great to see these programs begin to take root in the shed industry, but really, um, Andrew, this is sort of, you know, this is sort of a multifaceted, uh, opportunity in terms of sales. I mean, there's a lot of guys that, that work in the shed industry, obviously that listen but there's so many other products and, and uh, whether it be furniture or carports and really just sort of having a professional sales training, sales organization really matters. And we'll get to some of that here in a little bit with Barbara, where she can kind of show a demo of a little bit about the product of making sales simple. So those of you that are viewing on YouTube, if you're not uh, go to YouTube, check it out, subscribe, always appreciate that. But you'll be able to see a little bit of a demo of uh, the software that's been put together and I've got to walk through a little bit of it and it's just kind of awesome. So, um, Andrew, what, what sort of the thought process behind it? Take us from, um, take us from the elementary level to the high school level here. Like let's, let's start out, let's start out in kindergarten. Tell me why making sales simple. What is, what do you hope to accomplish and, and what is it in a, in a nutshell? Sure. So we kind of started making sales simple. We had an idea for our own, uh, uh, shed lots and furniture retail locations. And we tried several other um, training companies. And what we found is uh, our salespeople are usually starting off from another industry. They're not seasoned, you know, salespeople. So they're, they're new to sales or new to commission. They're new to just greeting the customer. And we tried, like I said, we tried several training companies and we just, a lot of those are mostly geared towards uh, car sales is naturally what most training companies are. And they're geared towards that high level 
salesperson that a lot of that stuff just goes right over these, you know, these people's head. And, and even when I started sales, I didn't know how to talk to a customer, what not to do, what to do. So we created this company for our companies. Um, just the simple sales process on everything at the beginner level is how do you get your mind ready before that customer pulls into your lot up to what you do when they pull in your lot? Obviously, we know you don't stay in the office and wait for them. And how do we engage them? What questions do we ask? And it's just the, the um, foundation of the sale and how we get there. And once we created this, we rolled this out, of course, to all of our employees. And then um, we decided, hey, let's, let's market this to everybody else and let's offer it to them at a, a reasonable price that you know, it's not going to break the bank. And that's why a lot of times we offer these, these deals and these promotions, even sometimes free trials, because we want the people to use it, to try it, because we know that it's worked in our locations and that it's what the salespeople need. Yeah, definitely sounds great, man. One of the things you said immediately has been a, a topic of conversation, and I always love uh, to kind of talk about it. You said, Hey, you show up on our lot, you, you know, if you show up to our furniture lot, our sales lot, shed sales lot, whatever it looks like, Hey, we're not going to let you wait in the car. We're going to, we're going to talk to you. Um, I, I always like to have these conversations, um, as a consumer, me and my, my wife show up and, and the next thing you know, we're doing the back and forth, right? Like we're doing the, who's going to talk. You're going to talk. Am I going to talk? Who's going to be the one that's going to, you know, like you're already preparing for like the, the sales guy, you know, I'm holding onto my wallet cause I'm scared to death. He's going to sell me something I might want, you know? Thanks. And, and it, it's just so, so then it's like, Oh no, I don't really want to be bothered. I just kind of want to walk around and browse and look at the, the inventory or whatever it is first. But then there's this other part where people are like, oh, no, nobody even greeted me. They never even came and talked to me. Right. You know what I mean? Like they were trying to be kind by not being pushy, but we didn't reserve, we didn't receive any customer service. Why do you guys see it sort of, you know, paramount to, you know, at, at least address that customer? Or what's, what's sort of your thoughts on it, uh, I, I guess I should say? Sure. So when that customer pulls in your lot, uh, the number one thing that that I see at other shed lots and at uh, Peter shed lots is a lot of times the salespeople will you know look out the window and they'll wait for that customer to walk in, or they'll wait forever for that customer to be out there. So what we teach is how to approach that customer and to not be a we're not. Uh, trying to produce a um, salesperson that follows you around and a high pressure salesperson. That is not what we teach. We believe that that doesn't work in our industry, um, but we teach them on what questions to ask open ended questions um, to kind of start that conversation. And how do we start that conversation? Because if you've ever been to a, a sales lot and that, uh, and that salesperson begins to ask you questions and engage in you, it doesn't feel like they're a bother. But what the worst thing that happens is they go out and they kind of just follow you around with a pen and paper and they're just awkwardly in there between you and your wife's you know, discussion versus going out there asking questions uh, like, what are you going to be putting in the shed? Then we can determine, do they need a garage door? Do they need a, a man door? What size of door do they need? And so we're teaching them to ask those questions and so that, the, for one, the customer doesn't get something they don't want, but also that you can be a step ahead of them instead of, instead of what happens a lot of times is they'll take them and they won't listen to what the customer is saying. And they'll show them the shit that they want to sell that's more commission or higher price. And it doesn't meet the customer's needs. And what do you do as a customer? You begin to get frustrated and then you stop answering questions and it all goes downhill from there. At iFab LLC, our passion is welding, fabricating, and design. That's why in 2015, we began to commercially market our product to the shed, portable building, and mini barn industry. Our product is primarily used to build trusses. Our truss saw system cuts boards in one motion, and our truss press system installs and presses the gusset plates to a finished truss. We custom fabricate jigs that assure perfectly symmetrical truss setup without error. We also have other products designed to help your shed builder increase quality, 
efficiency, and save money. Our precision door tape will build your custom doors square every time and easily adjust to build any door. For products like these or other custom fabrication services for your barn shop, visit ifabllc.com or call 563-422-7496 or simply email us at ifabllc at gmail.com. Man, great point. Absolutely agree 100%. It's easy to be all about product knowledge and learning about all of these things and believing in your product. Um, one of the coolest things I, th- I think I can remember somebody telling me who's been in shed business for like 25 years, he was talking about like the, you know, overcoming the, the price barrier, for instance. And, you know, this was in a time where like COVID was, was in full steam and the, the price of lumber was increasing dramatically and the, yeah. the, the barrier for the salesperson sort of started to become, oh no, how am I going to sell this shed that was, you know, $3,900 for $4,700 because of this price increase. I was already struggling to get them to buy at 39. And I remember this guy told me, he said, one of the first things I did was give my salespeople encouragement that that same product increase affects your competition. So like you lost no ground, you know, because the average consumer is not going to know that was a $3,900 shed. They're going to shop and compare and you're going to be relatively close from one lot to the next. They're not going to be so dramatically different that yours is 2000 and theirs is, you know, went up to 4,700 and that's the price barrier you have to overcome. It's, it's a similar price barrier. So you don't really have to change, right? Like it's, you just, you, you go with it. They're, the customer is not going to be informed that there was that much of a price increase. And if they are, they know that's happening because it's happening with milk. It's happening with, <laughs> you know, <laughs> other things they're buying. So they understand that. Right. And it, it's funny you bring that up because that's one of our pain points. Uh, and when we created this making sales simple, uh, we didn't just go off of these sales techniques that, you know, this, these cool things to say that never work. We went off of, we've been in this, I've been in the, in the sales industry since I was 16 years old. And so is my brother. And we created stuff that we've seen issues with. And what I like to call that is selling out of your own pocket. They come in and they don't want to sell them or they don't want to offer them the RTO because they don't, they wouldn't buy it. Well, as we know, especially in the shed industry, RTO is very popular. A lot of people use it and a lot of people want it, but unfortunately we don't offer it a lot. And also what I like to say to people like that, that this shed went from 3,900 to 4,700. Uh, I remember when carports were like 695 when I started. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know what they are now. <laughs> um, but what I, what I selling out of your own pocket is what I like to tell them is I'll use an example like tires and rims. Do you have any idea how much tires and rims cost for your car? Because most people don't, right? Because we're not in that industry. So if they were $900 two years ago, and now they're $1,900, when you go in to buy them, if the, if the salesperson's like, oh, they're $1,900. Oh, yeah. Right? What am I going to think as a consumer? Yep. Yep. Versus, hey, they're 1900 bucks. It's the same thing with the shed industry. People don't know prices. People don't you know how much inflation has gone up. And like you said, everything's gone up. What you'll find is that salesperson that's been there for 30 years will struggle selling the 695 carport that's now 1195. But when you you find when you hire a new salesperson off the street and you say, "Hey, it's 1195." They begin to sell them like hotcakes. Why? Because to them that's still cheap. I mean, to get a, a shed for those right. prices is cheaper than you can build it when you look at it that way. And so it just begins to go back and simply teach them to change their mind and to not sell out of their own pocket. Awesome advice, man. They are confident in their price whenever they're a newbie because they're like, hey, that's just the price that it costs to do business, you know, yep. like, so we understand that. Peter, 
You've probably seen that. I definitely remember the 695 carports. I, I think we had a car dealer here that still has one up here with a sign that says like 595, <laughs> right? Where, where it's just been there for 15 years and like people yep. still stop by and they're like, that's really 595. It's like, oh no, I need to get that sign off of there. It's 1595 now. So, <laughs> right. But uh, you, you've right. seen this definitely in, in sheds specifically. Uh, we've seen some pretty, you know, uh, substantial price increases over time that are sort of, um, yeah, it's arguably you can you can go to whatever political realm you want to go to to figure out why it's done that. But one thing that we can pretty well um, um, verify is that that's pretty similar pricing across the nation, and those increases happen even among your competition. And I love what Andrew said, like like your your best uh proponent of the price but 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 then even rto andrew i was really bad at saying like oh guys like you can buy rto but it's expensive like think about what i was already doing yeah like like right for the people who aren't confident in it then and they're not selling it the right way they're like you know trying to convince them hey it's expensive but what are, what what other options you got, buddy? <laughs> you know, it's almost kind of like, <laughs> you know, whereas you could be confident in it and say, hey, we do have an alternative, you know, to cash or finance purchases, and it's called rent tone, and this is how it works, and this is the cost of it. And then just overcome those barriers that the customer presents with, this is really expensive, you know, and maybe show them the alternative to, like, renting a, a – storage unit for 10 years right. and then losing your stuff to storage wars. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this. yeah. So it's really just perspective, but um, yeah, I love it, man. I love the, I, so, so who's sort of uh, who, who's the guys behind this kind of like Andrew uh, Peter, it sounds like um, you've got Peter Miller uh, does a lot of this as, as well. So sort of what are you guys hoping to, What's the message you want to bring to the shed industry? How can I help you get that message to the shed industry so that they have confidence in purchasing a, a program from you? And maybe we can talk a little bit about that. I'm sorry. I left that open-ended, didn't I? Uh, I'll leave it up for grabs. Uh, uh, Peter, you want to take sort of the, the thought on that because I asked you four questions in one. Uh, and I'll just narrow that down and give you one one question here what is your message to the shed industry with making sales simple what do you want to accomplish yeah so basically it's what we wanted to accomplish when we made it right so we want to engage that salesperson whether they're a seasoned salesperson or a beginner salesperson either way a daily dose of sales training so you don't hit that person all at once with you know the whole sales process right you slowly teach them day by day um, a little bit more of the sales process. And that's where we start from the beginning level and end up, you know, at the um, more experience level. But um, you know, if I taught them everything in one day, they're not going to retain everything. So what we like to do is every day they get a little nugget to keep for that day. Try on the sales lot. The next day they get another one. At the end of the week, they get a recap of what they learned and how to implement it. Um, and that's kind of what we, like I said, that's what we made for our own lot. And that's kind of what we want to help other people with. Um, going back to what Andrew said, you know, about we have tried other sales training programs in the past. And they just weren't a fit for the, the shed industry. Uh, that's kind of what we want to help other, other people with. But add, add what Peter was saying there. Um, the, the, the program we have, we call it a drip system. And... We didn't have that at first. And we, of course, we rolled this out to our people. And we had one salesperson that watched the whole course in yes. about a week. And, you know, this is several weeks, several month training course. And he watched it in just uh, the first week. And he, all right, I got it. And like, what, what'd you learn? Well, um, they were good videos. And so we went back. <laughs> And we right. did what we call a drip program. And that is, again, in our name, simple. We keep it very simple. And that is uh, a drip program is where it's one step at a time. It's one step per week. So when they log on, they'll watch 
how do we approach a customer, which would be first and beginner? They watch those couple couple of videos. It's not very much, but they they learn that. And we encourage the manager of that lot or the owner to have them watch it more than once. But they cannot go to that next step of the sale until the next week. Because what we've learned, we did that. We took that same exact salesperson that watched all the videos in the first week and, you know, didn't learn anything. That same salesperson we went back to after uh, several weeks and they're watching step by step. And from, one of the, from their own words was, wow, I, I knew this stuff, but when I actually apply it, it actually helps out a lot with dealing with the customers. So that's what we found. We kind of ran this on our program, the trials, the errors, to work out the kinks. Um, and now we feel like we have a product that we can offer to people at an affordable price. Um, and the reason why we do it at an affordable price is um, we're, this is not our, our full-time job. Obviously, we have retail lots. And we didn't create this company to just retire off of this company and make a bunch of money and sell it to people to sign up and then and then, you know, once they, they're done, they, they give up and never sign up again, right? We wanted to make it affordable to where we created this for our, for our people. And if we can uh, offer this to more, the more people, the better. And so I think Barb can go over a little bit about uh, the program, uh, the specials we offer, uh, the diff different kind of uh, prices and how it works. Nowadays, there seems to be so much to choose from when it comes to offering rent -own. So many companies have all these promotional items that go along with the rent -own program. It's hard to know where the rent -own program ends and the shed company begins. At Country Classic Rentals, we believe in doing business the old-fashioned way. Old-fashioned doesn't mean we're not capable. It means we still value a handshake. And we believe when you say something, your word means something. There was a time when you could look someone in the eyes and say what you mean and mean what you say. We have built our company from that philosophy. At Country Classic Rentals, you can be confident that when you produce an RTO contract for your customer, we will make sure that the customer is taken care of when they become our customer. Country Classic Rentals is ready to have exploratory phone calls with shed companies in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, and Tennessee looking to partner with a trusted and resourceful RTO partner. If you're looking for an RTO partner who will work for you, give us a call at 937-483-4588 or call toll-free at 800-649-5667. Just ask for Stan and we'll be happy to have a conversation. Country Classic Rentals, the freedom of ownership. Yeah, Barb, let's uh, take a look at it. You've got a uh, screen share there available. So for those of you who are listening, uh, again, encourage you to go Check out the video. You can see it on um, by just going to YouTube. Type in uh, Shed Geek, making sales simple, and uh, you'll be able to take a look. But Barb, let, let us see sort of what they're looking at whenever they sign up. Uh, educate me. For sure. Um, I also, you know, I've never been a radio host, so I'll do the best that I can for those people that are just listening as I go through this demo. And then the other really quick thing I want to add um, People are, are usually when they're a fish in water like these guys, you know, that they do a day in and a day out, you know, they're at the shed lot, they're delivering things, they're selling things, everything like that. I just wanted to point out that, you know, I don't I can't say how important it is to emphasize on the fact that they felt that there was nothing out there for the shed industry. The shed industry, from what I've learned, is a very tight knit family. Right. And people are really proud of what they build. They put on windows, they put on ramps or whatever it is. And they're really proud of that, right? It's it's something to be said about the industry. So when I was in the process of creating this, um, putting these uh, videos together for them, I realized that they were right. You know, you can't just go and train someone on how to force that sale and how to beat the customer into the ground to extract money from them versus having a conversation and saying, you know, what is it that you really need, Mr. Customer? And I think all these videos really touch on that. And there's a lot to be said on, on quality of the information because it's specific to the shed industry. But um, yeah, that's what I wanted to point out. I, I mean, it's it's really easy to follow and very easy to, um, to learn. So I'll start sharing my screen and I wanna start, I'm gonna start with some of the video content and how that looks. 
All right. So here, what we're looking at, just FYI, is the very first beginner course. And in the first beginner course, like, uh, you know, Andrew and Peter were sharing, it's made out of 12 steps to a sale. So if you look on the left hand side here, you have all the components from the beginning of when you start that conversation with the customer all the way through how to follow up and ask the right questions, right? Identify what their needs are. So if you go through the system here and you click on one of these sections, it'll pull up the three videos. You can see them here. So it's video one and it tells you the time that it takes to watch the video. As you can see, it's very um, user friendly. It's nothing that's gonna bog your salespeople down, which is a big plus. And as you go through here, as Andrew was explaining, you cannot go into the next video until it actual until you actually watch all of these and then go through your quiz. So that's something that's pretty neat with each of these. Um, as we're looking at it, just because I'm an admin, you can see them all open, but there will be like a lock here with the weeks of when you're going to be able to access those. Um, another cool thing that we've put on some of these videos are some PDFs that people can use. So they always talk about follow-up is, you know, the, the sale is in the follow-up. So you can go through these videos and you'll see like in this section here, prospecting worksheet, PDF. If you see the little PDF icon that basically says you can download that. So your sales team can start to create those, um, uh, try, start to create those consistent activities that calls for them to call somebody, email them, or start to network in different areas and different groups, right? Because we're not always trying to sell on the shed lot. If you're part of the shed family and people know what you do, you always have to be on the, on the lookout for um, new prospects. So again, you know, it's made up of videos, three videos, a quiz, and in some instances, you'll have some support PDFs. So that's a little bit about how the um, content is divided. I'd like to go over the part where we do group sales, Shannon, which is pretty cool. And in group sales, so say, for example, you have like, I don't know, five, seven or more salespeople. You as the main business owner, we can set you up with an admin section. And in the admin section, you can see everyone. You can see the courses, first of all, that you have. So as you can see, you can take a look at all the users you have underneath your seat. You can also go in the admin panel. You can definitely go to the grade book and you can start to see how each of the people that you've signed up has been doing through their quizzes. Obviously, we don't make it that difficult. The goal with the program isn't to get extremely fancy or crazy smart. It's just to create these habits of repetition and consistency to just become that more confident salesperson. So, you know, as you log in and you look at all these uh, grade book, you can actually point out and see, okay, why is this person at 67? You know, why did they get that incorrect? And maybe have a conversation with them because it's obviously only a one minute video, right? Are you afraid? Is there something more to why, you know, you're not performing your best? So definitely um, there's something to be said about the admin panel for those, uh, those shed owners or salespeople that have more than one person selling. So if you have like multiple lots, you'd have maybe one or two people on each lot, then that would be, this is something that we would recommend for that. That's pretty simple. I mean, uh, making so simple isn't that complicated. We're not trying to, you know, save the planet, just make sure we're training the right uh, salespeople. Well, and so many times it's so needed because, uh, Peter, I don't know about you, whenever you got into selling sheds, but I know certainly for me, whether you be a consignment dealer where the manufacturer owns the inventory whether you're purchasing the inventory yourself if you come in with like no sales training on moving a a uh, retail product um, you're kind of in some ways you're saying let's throw the darts at the wall and let's see which one stick and, and a lot of times that's what happens is you find good dealers because good dealers sort of continue to uh, learn they continue to expand their own knowledge. They continue to um, uh, try to 
figure out what it is that's driving customer behavior. And, and a lot of times we've sort of seen that with them purchasing their own websites and creating, you know what I mean? Like going through the whole 3d thing, like going through, through all of it that it takes to like meet the need of being a satisfactory and above par, um, um, dealer. Uh, but what I like about this is like, if you come in with zero experience in sales, this is giving you the footprint. It's giving you the basic instructions so that you can be successful, you know, and, and what's really great is you guys have like these different tiers where if you come in with more ex experience, uh, there's areas where you may be vulnerable that it can help even more. Hello, shed sellers. Let's take a moment to discuss the shed customer and meeting their expectations. I remember growing up in the neighborhood where a certain percentage of the houses had well manicured lawns and well manicured homes. These were the type of individuals who felt it was important to purchase a well constructed home or vehicle or maybe equipment to help maintain the quality of the item. As shed manufacturers, we seek to provide a well built quality shed. We want the customer to feel satisfied that their hard earned money has been well spent on a product that will last. At LuxGuard, we believe adding high quality rubber flooring to your line of sheds makes sense to the customer and adds value the customer can appreciate. With each year, sheds are becoming more complex. The customizations we are seeing are virtually endless. LuxGuard not only gives a complimentary aesthetic appearance for their shed, but also protects the floor from spills and keeps cleanup simple. Offer your customer the customer service they seek with LuxGuard. At LuxGuard, we are committed to delivering exceptional customer service and innovative products to help our customers achieve their goals. We strive to meet the evolving needs of the customers. To speak with one of our ready to serve customer product specialists, simply call 336-468-4311. To see our product and view an installation video, just visit our website at luxguard.com. Luxguard, the floor that lasts a lifetime. One of my favorite things, uh, Andrew, is this, and I wrote this down while we were, while, while Barbara was going through the training, this is letting the training take root. This is developing good uh, behavior because it's letting the training take root. If you go back to your guy who'd done it all in a, in a, in a week, he's like, wow, that's really cool. That's awesome. Uh, but did you perform <laughs> any of it, right? Why did you read a book? You read a book to gain the knowledge to put it into motion, right? So like, why did you watch the video? Like now let's play that out in real time over a week. And then you come back next week and you're developing habits through your sales training, right? Right. The other thing, Shannon, is, you know, a lot of times people watch these videos and they're like, man, that's, that's, that's like simple. You know, I already know that I already know how to talk to a customer, but it's the simple stuff. A lot of times that gets overlooked. And a lot of times people are always looking for that you know, next fancy word to say, or a, a new closing technique. And it's sales go back hundreds of years. And it's the same process now as it was then. Interacting with your customer, building that relationship with your customer. You know, when you walk into a, uh, you know, a place of business, you can tell when that salesperson truly cares about you, or yeah. they're trying to ask you these questions and twist your arm from something they learned on YouTube on how, if you, if you say this and you look at them in the eye and you do this, that, that stuff is not how you build relationships. And as Barbara already mentioned, it's amazing to see the, the family atmosphere in the shed industry. Uh, it's, it's cool to see that everybody helps each other out. And as she said as well, the pride they take in their buildings. You know, and I think about this a lot of times people in the shed industry build great products. They're out there. And a lot of times the owners are the ones that are out there building it and because their names on the line, right. And they want to make sure this shed is perfect. Then they hire somebody who doesn't know anything about sales <laughs> to sell that product while they're out in the back making it. Right. And a lot of times it doesn't get represented well. And it's very important to have that salesperson that is trained on the simple steps of selling so that when that customer walks in the door, 
they represent your product well, they represent you well, and they learn how to build that relationship and to get that customer. When you build a relationship with a customer, it doesn't just last one sale. They continue to come back. You know, and as you're building, Peter, sort of that relationship with that customer, like Andrew's talking about, you're you're building retention with a customer, you're building future business, but you're building referrals. You know, you're installing right. confidence uh, that they should tell their neighbors about where to purchase from. It's a, 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 and I know this, and you know this, customers can be impulsive, you know, and depending on the size of the product, the customer acquisition can take very long. Well, sheds isn't super lengthy, but there needs to be enough time that they don't just stand with one foot in the door and one foot out the door and saying, the guy down the street said he's a hundred dollars cheaper. You know, you're better off to just be like, well, go get, get that shed for a hundred dollars <laughs> cheaper. See you later. Cause like, I care about my customer enough that I don't just want to sell you real quick, fast and easy on a price. And like, we're going to beat them no matter what it takes. We're going to sit down with you and discuss the product knowledge, going to discuss the RTO side so that you understand it so that you're not confused about it later. And it creates like good begets good, right? Like it just continues to create good for, for moving forward. Peter, something that we used to do, I know, I, so I, wor- I worked at the, the casino and I always tell people I spent 10 years working at this local casino. Uh, nothing I ever wanted to do necessarily in my life, but it, it taught me so much. And what they were really good about was customer service. But the one thing they would do is they would have what they called buzz each morning. Say, what's buzz? Well, buzz yeah. is like, what's all the buzz? What's all the buzz about? You know, you come in every day and you get a team of 15 people around and you say, well, what's all the buzz about? What's all the buzz for today? What happened last night? What happened yesterday? Uh, and then what's going to happen this week? And then we would play a game to sort of get our mind right before we went out to serve the customer because we didn't sell a product. We sold a service. So we had to make sure that our minds were right. Our smiles were on. We had to make sure that we were just ready to embrace the, the, the customer. And I got to thinking about how that's biblical in a sense that, you know, it's like devotion. You know, when you're devoted to the word and you begin to like devote to reading or devote to anything, if you're a salesperson, why wouldn't you be taking a small amount of time to devote to your sales process? And and if that's not getting with other salespeople or other salespeople in the shed industry or other salespeople in your company, this is a very simple product to just kind of service to just kind of get you in the right mindset for the day. Correct. Yeah. And that's what. It is, you know, it is just that the simple, like, Hey, reminder, you are in sales. You're here to help that customer figure out what they need. You know, before this, you know, the only one I had was, um, you know, just the Facebook groups. Those were, those are tremendous as well. You get on there and you're looking, you're, you know, you're looking at the shed haulers or the shed sales, you know, and, you're gaining tips, knowledge a little bit, or even just, Hey, I'm not in this alone. There's other people out there that, you know, do the same thing. Um, maybe I don't post very much, but I do read everybody else's comments, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just that, that simple, like I'm not in this alone, you know, but I am here to sell. I'm here to help that customer that walks through that door, just that every day, you know, reminder. Um, and that, you know, like you said, that devotion every day, I'm going to spend, you know, a, a few minutes on the computer, helping my sales journey, helping that customer find the product they need. It just gets your mindset in the right place for whenever a customer does right. come in. So like highly encourage people to go check out the program, sign up, uh, get your mind in the right place whenever you're getting ready to sit down and sell a shed every day or whatever you're selling. This is kind of, this works really good for, right. you know, alternative uh, sales uh, as well too. It's this, I mean, this is sort of a, um, I don't want to say introductory, program but in some ways it is it's making sales simple it's taking the 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 common sense sales approach and really putting it in front of your customer so yeah i love that let's talk about pricing let's talk about getting people signed up oh and i I wanted to before we even talked about that um i i wanted to say you were talking about the facebook groups and different things you know, get into those things, start watching other podcasts, yes. read books, get audio books. Matter of fact, making sales simple has a podcast. Uh, like if, if people want to find out more about it, I'm sure they can just do like I did and just go Google making sales simple. You're going to be able to find out how to get there. That's going to get your mind right with the tips and the discussions that you guys are having 
that gets you just sort of geared up into that 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 mindset of selling right to be around other people stirring up yep. good and stirring up things that, that that you're doing too so like we're connected in this in this uh it, it, unusual way but still it, it, it gets your mindset right barbara before we talk price or anything did you have anything you wanted to add yeah, I, i'd like to add just a couple of quick points on what was being said you mentioned you know that people need to listen to podcasts or it, it becomes like a routine of some sort and then your mindset needs to be right every time people are talking sales or pointing out those things reminds me of a few videos that we have within the sales um, making sales simple videos. And it just really covers on how to get your mind right, right? Because some of the time people come to the lot and you have all kinds of different things happening in your life. We all are have families, you know, things we have to face. But when you show up for the game, it's a whole different ball game. So um, I wanted to point that out that it does really break down the simplicity of a sales and how to go through that process. And then the other thing that I like that you said as well was, who do you surround yourself with, right? That was another video that I remember. I mean, seriously, I think I've watched these videos like maybe 20 times a piece, but uh, it's just, when I look at it, it's simple, but yet, you know, it, it's effective. So if, if I could break down this for the listeners, it's you have your beginner section, which breaks down every step of the way of the sale, but then you have your intermediate and advanced and it goes a little deeper, right? And the beauty is in how it's divided into these little small chunks of videos, but compiled together, it makes this sense of now you have all that you pretty much need to understand how to manage that sale, right? And then you refine it obviously to your style because we all have our own styles per se on how we sell, but that that's pretty neat. And then the last thing I just want to share with the listeners is, you know, it's just a conversation. It's definitely taken away from you. You said something super important, Shannon, if you're building and, and then you're in the back and I know Andrew mentioned it too, on being prideful of your work. Not only is this helping the shed business owner, it's taken away from their day to day, right? Because when you hire people, you could have a little bit of sense of like a, uh, feeling like you're going to add more to your workload. Now I have to hire somebody. Now I have to train them. Now I have to tell them how I like things. But this really just gets that little launching pad of getting that salesperson to understand this is what's simply happening. It's a conversation. You're going to discover what the customer needs with these simple questions. And then from there, you know, it's not that difficult to just offer, hey, I know you don't have $10,000 in your pocket, but here's how simple you can pay for this, right? So it's just a matter of really helping shed business owners out there that don't have the time, want to expand, and, and need those salespeople to be trained at least on the bare minimum sales approach. Well, and this works for multiple, multiple companies. If you're a small manufacturer who wears multiple hats, this is a simple solution for whenever you bring on a dealer just to sign them up on and Hey, here, go find the fundamentals. I always go back to the Bible and baseball as sort of my basis, right? And both of them will always tell you it's the fundamentals. It's understanding, uh, you know, things on a small level until you graduate into a larger level. And that's all baseball is played over and over and over. And really that's what ministry is to me. I, I, I read things now that I didn't understand 20 years ago. People say it don't make sense. And I'm like, well, it's because you haven't arrived yet to the place where it's going to make sense for you. But ask your parent to your grandparents because maybe it makes sense to them. Uh, and that's really that's really just getting to a place in life of like experiencing something so that they do make sense. And uh, this is the, the, the fundamentals of your basic sales process. When I started selling shed, somebody handed me a, a book, uh, a dealer book and said, have at it. Good luck. <laughs> This is what we sell. You know what I mean? And like, I hope you do well. And like, it would have been yeah. nice to have like the basics. It would have been nice to have the fundamentals available for me. So this works for a small manufacturer who wears multiple hats. And maybe one of those hats they don't have time to wear is let's go through and train our salespeople. Or, or maybe they don't have the expertise or the patience or, or the time or whatever it is. It's available. But this, this also works for a large manufacturer who doesn't have an established program, even if they have a sales, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, manager, you know, maybe they don't have, you know, something that, that, that actually is tangible 
every day. They have a sales manager, but that person gets caught in the rut of trying to open up lots and, you know, they don't really get to develop their salespeople very often. So just simple, no brainer, seems real easy. Hello, Shed Sellers. Did you catch the latest Real Work Labs interview with George Converse? If not, don't miss this value-packed episode. Head to Shed Geeks Podcast YouTube and search Real Work Labs. George and the Real Work Labs crew are riding the wave of Google's latest updates, taking your digital presence to the next level. We're tech artisans crafting your neighborhood brand voice for shed sellers like you to stand out, gain trust, and get found online. Our software will easily capture your work snapshots, videos, weave your craft's story, and get reviews all in one virtual experience. Our innovation goes beyond getting found for your business location, rather getting found for your work locations. Reviews intertwine with their corresponding job sites. When potential customers seek local expertise, you're the proven solution they'll find. It's high time to map your reviews and showcase your beautiful work in a meaningful way that builds trust in customers' neighborhoods. Ready for the journey? Visit shedgeek.realworklabs.com or call George today at 480-787-7575. Real Work Labs, elevating your trust, increasing your conversions, and getting you found where you work in the neighborhoods you serve, one shed at a time. What's it cost, guys? Like, let's talk about pricing. How, uh, Barbara, is this going to, you know, what what can we do? Can we save some people some money here today? What can we do? You guys give me some ideas. Yeah, that's funny that you should ask that because when they were we were sitting around the table, everybody was tossing around numbers. And not only that, the, the you know, Andrew and Peter said they actually went to a lot of training companies, right? And it was like, well, we don't want to be in the $500 range because then that doesn't make sense for, you know, for our customers. So our price is really affordable. You can sign up at each, each person since they, we track every person and their performance, as you saw in that demo, each person is $99 a month, which is extremely affordable when you think in the grand scheme of things of how many sheds, you know, they're actually going to sell more than they did the day before. Right. So $99 a month is what we charge normally, but obviously, you know, we, we connected with you and said, Hey, we're going to put together something that your audience can, you know, take advantage of and, and pretty much just helping the industry once again. So what we were thinking as we also were racking our brains to figure that out was a dollar a day, you know? So for 60 days, $60 access to the lessons that come with the system and pretty much just getting your team on there to pretty, pretty get pretty good at refining their sales. So a dollar a day is where we're at. And, you know, the way that they can take advantage of that is going on to the making sales simple.com and they choose their shed um, training because we do offer this for the furniture business as well. Uh, once they choose the shed one, then they just have to enter the um, offer code SG for uh, shed geek and then the word save S A V E. Well, and I'll make sure that we put this on the newsletter. For those of you that don't receive the newsletter, just let me know. Email either me at info at shedgeek.com or my wife, Deanna, at shedgeek.com, uh, and we'll get you added to the newsletter. And we'll make sure to put some of those uh, links in there. Uh, we'll make sure to link to Making Sales Simple on that newsletter, uh, and we'll make sure to put on the offer code on there, SG Save. So a dollar a day, you can go experience a very simple sales process for a very, very economical and fair price. And if you don't have anything established, gosh, when, when is the time when we're not seeing Peter, we're not seeing COVID shed numbers right now. Like it's hard to go no. almost anywhere where people say, you know, uh, we're seeing a decline in, in, in shed sales, not because the shed, market is failing but more so because the economy seems to be more strained dollars seem to be less available there's not the supplementary money that's in in floating in the air through government subsidies and to be quite honest with you i'm calling this the old normal i'm starting a trend guys like everybody used to say this is the new normal get used to it and i'm i'm saying 
this is the old normal. The old normal is you got to work <laughs> for sales. You have to work for your customer. And um, that all that free money is not just readily available all the time. And if you're not prepared with even the basics and fundamentals of sales, um, you could be doing a disservice to putting $100,000 plus of inventory on a lot and just handing somebody a book and saying, I hope you do well and we'll see in a year. And if not, we're going to pull our sheds and, you know, find somebody who, who does, man, this is going to get them what, what they need. So excited to see these programs take root. You know, the shed haulers have sort of, man, seem real established. The shed manufacturers kind of have like their stuff going really good, but it's kind of awesome to see these programs begin to, to take root in the sales side. Uh, very, very necessary and awesome and happy to see you guys doing something. So believe it or not, we're at 48 minutes and that happens really, really fast. So I'll tell you what, um, do you guys have anything else you want to offer? If not, I'll do, I'll do what I've been doing here lately. And, uh, what I typically do is turn the microphone around if you don't have anything to add. Uh, and I give you a chance to interview the geek for a question or two. Uh, it's just been fun. It's it's extended conversation, whether it's personal, professional, podcast mm. related, whether it's uh, shed related, you name it. Uh, if you have some questions, ask and it, and it creates good conversation. But I want to give you a chance first to give your final thoughts if you have any. And then if you guys don't, uh, feel free to ask, ask away. Okay. So where did you learn how to sell? What was your what was your intro to sales? I would I would make the argument that my intro to sales was at the the casino. Uh, before that, I was a jailer. You don't really sell much, um, <laughs> you know. Okay. <laughs> uh, my 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 in laws are all in uh, state corrections, and I thought that's the road I wanted to go down, and I realized it wasn't. And uh, I kind of felt like the casino did as much to bring me out of my shell as any for customer service. So there was some aspects of selling if I was, um, you know, working in a department there, but never developed any professional sales training. Um, okay. I feel like I, once I started selling sheds, I was inquisitive enough on my own to, to be hungry, to want to learn. I wanted to know about all of my competition, what they offered, what I offered, yeah. how it compared. Um, I talked to them. I didn't see them as like, you know, like enemies, I would call them up and talk to them or try to meet with them. And so for me, it was like, you know, success leaves clues. Very, Gary Vaynerchuk says that all the time. So to me, like whatever information was available for you to be successful, the same information would be available to me. Unless, of course, you were trying to limit me or hide that information from me, uh, in which case, you know, you, you, you sort of found the players, the guys that were kind of like willing to collaborate or talk and and just kind of say, hey, you know, if you're going to go get it, go after it, you know, but these are the things you should do. And I became sort of a student of people. I read a lot of books. The Little Red Book of Sales was definitely recommended to me, and it's still one of my favorite books by Jeffrey Gittimer. Um, but, you know, other books as well. I'm a huge Simon Sinek fan, and I, I just love listening to people talk about the. I, I listen to podcasts. I listen to Rob Jepson. He's one of my favorite sales podcasters, you know. So it's just kind of um, – uh, just being hungry. I don't know what, how you create that in a person. I think you just right. get to a point where right. you have this desire to succeed or you don't. Uh, and some people don't and uh, they become dead weight and sort of a cancer to the program. So you, you know, you move forward with those who want to move forward, I think is the answer. So I hope I answered that correctly. Yeah. Andrew, any questions come to mind? Feel free to, to ask away if you have them, Barbara. What's your favorite thing about the shed industry? If you had to pick one thing, what would it be? Um, so I would say community. If I put it in a word, it would be community. Um, a lot of what I've learned about how there's so much Anabaptist influence in the industry, uh, I've become sort of like, you know, a student of like uh, what the message is of the Anabaptist community because I didn't grow up with that in my background and a lot of things they talk about are community. Um, so for the guys who are trying to move forward in the shed industry through true authentic collaboration and, you know, not a one size fits all, but more, more a, like we're all in this together mentality. I think those guys, cause, cause you know, where does that meet business acumen? 
like where does collaboration meet competition, right? Like we have to compete on some things, but, but then there's like this larger calling, this ministry calling that says we're about our brother and our sister. So I don't want to like hurt anybody, you know, through business. Um, so that's kind of been, I think the sense of community that exists in it. I haven't experienced that in a lot of other businesses. Certainly didn't have that in the jailing uh, community and the, 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 the casino community, right. You know, so I think the sense of community and feeling of belonging in a career, I think that's been my, my favorite thing. I have a question for you, which yeah. I'll go to the fun side of things. How many States have you visited and what is your favorite? Do you like collect souvenirs from each of those? So picturing you with a collection of little tchotchkes everywhere. We fit, yeah, we collect cups. My my wife has uh, like blue cobalt, cobalt like stuff that she likes to collect, uh, nice. and we collect a blue cobalt cup from every state if we can uh, to sort of add to the collection. Um, I think like on the East Coast, we've been everywhere except for Maine. We've been close, but we, we haven't been in Maine, Delaware, and Rhode Island. We've been right on the cusp of all of them. But out west, we still have quite a bit to explore. I would say somewhere around 25, maybe 30 states so far, um, just oh. specifically for, for sheds. Um, we're making a trip out west, so I'll knock a couple of those off uh, in the spring and early January. So eventually it would be really nice to be able to say I've hit all 48 lower, at least, visiting a shed lot in each one. We've had listeners in all 50 states so and Canada, so I want to I wanna do all of that i mean if if we can and that's why we bought the camper was to go around and visit as many people as we can in the industry because i feel like as much as i love doing these zoom calls in person is is always better but we'll take what we can get and as far as my favorite um i've been surprised at how much i enjoy the state of new york um all the news media tells you all these things growing up as a midwest kid but the state of New York, I mean, there's so many beautiful states, but the state of New York is actually very beautiful with the Finger Lakes and, and going across uh, from Buffalo to New York. Uh, most people know it as just New York City, but I've been pleasantly surprised at the state of New York. It's gorgeous. So maybe that's my favorite, I guess I'd say. It does have a great landscape. I, I, I hear you. Yeah, just gorgeous. I mean, there's so many, like everybody says down south, and of course, you know, I love Florida. Like who doesn't love Florida? It's December, <laughs> November in, J in, 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 in Illinois. But, um, yeah, still want to get down and see you guys at, at some point too. And I just want to be a person who can help you in whatever way, shape and form. And I, I can't help, but encourage people enough to take these, these no brainer decisions, like making sales simple and just go do these things. Like they're gonna, you know, uh, the thing that I've had to uh, surprised me the most, this is when the question you guys asked, but the things that surprised me the most is how hard the shed industry is to sell to <laughs> like the expectations of the average shed seller and manufacturer uh, of their customer are not necessarily the same expectations that they have when you have something to sell to them. Uh, so it almost seems as though it takes a little bit more convincing um, so they can be difficult customers. So, they're in some ways my, my ultimate sales um, barrier that I have to overcome. And, and I kind of feel like that's why the podcast is, is super important to me. It gets information out, um, and it even gets information out if it's somebody I compete with. It's one of those things where I'm like, why would you not want to better yourself? I, I remember getting asked a lot of times, and I still get asked this, what about this program versus this program? And I'm like, well, my answer is real simple. Um, if you can only sign up for one program because that's all the need you have for, do your own due diligence to figure out which program makes the most sense for you. But if it's a program that helps you and you can sign up for both, it doesn't have to be either or. Like whatever helps you sell a shed, sell a shed. Whatever helps you build a shed, build it like, you know, uh, Facebook and Instagram and all these others all exist, right? Like you can go to all of them and get the best of, of, of all the worlds of them. So if they're in your price point, like it doesn't have to be an either or not everything has to be an either or it can be like, I'm getting help from here and getting help from here. And if it's helping you be successful, then 
let's we, we can drop some of the has to be one or the other kind of mentality i think you guys are the professionals so uh i'll leave it to you guys i'm gonna stop recording but i can't say enough about uh go and check out making sales simple a dollar a day you guys just uh you're just not going to be disappointed i can't see how you would so go check them out today complete endorsement here from the shed geek podcast